Hey everyone, it's Mike from Order Flows and uh, welcome to today's presentation. I'll be talking about the building blocks of order flow and I'm gonna talk about especially the uh, Delta surge, which is a specific event that occurs in the order flow and it occurs you know daily depending on you know you could use it on very short time frames, 30 seconds, um, very you know five one minute chart, five minute chart. 15 minute chart, you know, people always ask, you know, hey, I'm I'm a more of a long-term trader. I'd want to sit in front of the screen all day. You know, is there something that I could just um, use on a longer time frame? And the Delta surge is something that you can use on a longer time frame. So, you know, what I'll be talking about today is Delta imbalances and point of control. You know, I got to cover all three of those because to me, those are the building blocks of order flow, right? You have to know the basics of what you're looking at to put it together and you have to know why they matter you know what they mean what goes into those numbers and how to apply them now before i begin you know just understand you know trading involves risk right i, I want you to come in um into you know the trading world understanding that there's risk involved you know it, it's not a sure thing you know as much as we would love to have uh sure things in life there's no sure thing in life except uh, death and more taxes so for those of you that are new to order flow and you want to learn more about order flow, I give away a copy of my book that I wrote, Trading Order Flow. It's 150 pages. You're not going to get the hard copy. You're going to get a link to the download page uh, where you could go and download the copy and print it up. So, you know, most people, when they think of order flow, they think back, uh, you know, 100 years ago to, uh, you know, Wall Street in the 20s, you know, when everyone's looking at a ticker tape and trying to read what's going on. You know, nowadays, trading has changed. It's become computerized and you know the the amount of information that's out there is just overwhelming you know it's like trying to drink water from a fire hose and my goal today is to show you how you can use order flow in an easy to read format how to analyze it and more importantly how to apply it to your trading now for those of you that are not familiar with me just a brief background um, since 2015, I've been the owner and trader of orderflows.com, which is a software and education company to teach traders how to trade, how to read the order flow. Um, prior to that, I spent eight years at JP Morgan as vice president of futures trading. I spent three years at Commerce Bank as a Eurex trader. Where I traded Bunds, Bobble, Shats. I traded them against the, the U.S. bonds, um, the E-mini S&Ps, the NASDAQ, you know, the five years, the 10 years. Uh, prior to that with Cargill four years as a trading desk manager where we literally traded every commodity in the world. Same thing at EDF Man. I spent two years there. And I started on the floor as a runner with Dean Witter. And I left the floor when electronic trading started taking, uh, gaining a foothold in the industry, right? I realized that, you know, electronic trading is going to be the future. And, you know, I wanted to position myself that way. So I left the trading floor and I worked upstairs to trade electronically. So what I did after I left JP Morgan is I started this company called Order Flows. And basically what I did is I took my, up to that point, 20 years of trading experience, and I wanted to put it into a software program. You know, it's hard to get all your ideas down and put it into a software. So really what I did is, is I took, you know, sort of the core concepts that I used in my trading career, and I wrapped it around um, an order flow format of software, a way to read the data. And it, I came up with the order flows trader. It's an add on for Ninja Trader 8. Now, the charts that you see in this presentation are generated from my order flows trader software. So, basically, what the order flows trader software does is it takes all that information on the time and sales, right, which I just showed you, and it puts it into an easy to read format. Now, I didn't invent the volume footprint chart, another person did. But what I did is I took it a step further, right? I put my own analysis into that chart. You know, it's not like Steve Jobs invented the iPhone. What he did, or he invented the iPhone, he didn't invent the handphone. But what he did is he took the handphone and he took it to another level. And that's what I'm always trying to do with the order flows trader. You know, I'm always trying to add new forms of analysis to help traders understand the market and find better trades. And, you know, just really briefly, you know, other people are, are using my software. They, they're saying great things about it. You know, here's a user. She says, you know, with the order flows trader software, she can see really what's happening in the market, like who's in control of the market on a very specific time and who's getting weaker as well. But 
this presentation, you know, I'm not really here to sell you that software. I'm really here to talk about order flow. You know, if you're interested about my software, you can go to my website, orderflows.com. So what do we know about markets? How do they trade? Well, we know markets trade through a two-way auction, right? There's a bid price and there's an offer price. So for example, you know, if the, the market in the E-mini S&Ps, this is a little outdated, 29.55 and a quarter versus 29.55 offer, meaning somebody's willing to buy it at 29.55 and a quarter, someone's willing to sell it at 29.55 and a half. Okay, but no trade's going to occur unless somebody either lifts the offer or hits the bid. So what's got to happen, right, is you have to have somebody that's willing to say, I'm willing to pay the offer price. You know, I'm willing to pay 29.55 and a half or somebody that's willing to say, I'm going to sell it at 29.55 and a quarter. Okay. Now, in order to do that, you have to understand there's different types of trading that's going on. There's passive traders, there's aggressive traders, right? The people that sit on the bid are passive traders. People that sit on the offer are passive traders, right? Imagine you go to a car dealer, you want to buy a new car, right? And the dealer has a list price of $25,000 for the car, but you probably want to pay $23,000. Well, you want to pay $23,000 the car dealer wants to sell it at 25,000. You guys are both passive traders in that respect. One of you, for someone to either the dealer to sell the car or for you to buy the car has to be aggressive. Either if you're the buyer, you want to buy the car, you move your bid up, right? You lift his offer at 20 at uh, 25,000. If the car dealer says, you know, knows in the back of his head, "Oh my gosh, you know, I got to, I got 10 more cars coming in tomorrow. I got to start moving these cars." He might be aggressive and sell it to you at the price that you're willing to pay, 23,000, right? So passive traders are those that, um, you know, work bids, work offers, and they wait for the market to come to them. Aggressive traders are those that don't wait for the market to come to them. They trade at the market, they sell into the bid, or they buy the offer. Now, once you understand that difference that, you know, there's, there's two different types of buyers, there's two different types of sellers. You have passive sellers, you have aggressive sellers, you have aggressive buyers, you have passive buyers, then you can start interpreting what's happening in the order flow. And what makes the order flow so powerful is it allows you, the trader, to see early signs of a move about to happen, but you have to know what to look for. Now, if you look at a normal footprint chart without knowing you know, what to look for, it, it's, it's going to be pointless, right? It's like you know, a doctor, you go to the doctor, you have an x-ray done. Doctor holds it up, you look at it, and you say, oh, okay, that's my rib cage. Doctor can look at it, oh yeah, this is the problem, this is a problem. You know, he's trained to understand what to look for in the x-ray, whereas unless you're trained, you know, to, to know what to look for in an x-ray, you're not gonna be able to make heads or tails of it. And the same thing goes with order flow. You know, you have to learn what to look for in the data. Now, the good news is it's not as complicated as, most people think it's actually fairly straightforward, you know, and again, it comes down to learning the basics and the basics are delta imbalance and point of controls, you know, three things that pretty much all the rest of order flow. Once you understand those three core concepts, everything else really falls into place and it's all the information will show up on your chart. So, Delta is the net difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers in a bar, all right? So if you have positive delta, you know buyers are in control at that time. If you have negative delta, that means sellers are in control. And what it's doing is it's when an aggressive buyer buys the offer, that registers as plus one delta. If an aggressive seller sells into the bid that registers as minus one in the delta. Obviously, if there's no trade going on, it's zero. And over the course of a bar, you know, with your aggressive buying, your aggressive selling going on, you know, however the bar ends up, you'll either have a positive number or a negative number. Occasionally, it does fall on zero, but that's just more of coincidence than anything else. But generally, when your bar has positive delta, 
it indicates buyers are in control of that bar and it's usually going to be a green candle an up candle if you have negative delta in the bar generally it's going to be a red candle it's going to tell you sellers are in control now imbalances this is what happens in the two-way auction right we talked about earlier you have a bid and you have an offer when you have more aggressive sellers than aggressive buyers in the two-way auction you know one bid at two if you have six buyers at two versus one seller at one you have an imbalance because there was you know six to one so generally people use imbalances of four to one as their minimum threshold you could use whatever you like i know people that use ten to one i know people that use five to one i know people that use uh two and a half to one but what's important is you want to look at what you consider an imbalance in the market. You know, think of it like uh, a seesaw, right? You have two evenly weighted people on a seesaw and it's gonna be balanced, but then another kid jumps on the seesaw, it's gonna be out of balance. And another kid jumps on the same side, you got three kids on one side versus one on the other, you know, it's, it's imbalanced. The one kid on the other side is up in the air and the three kids are sitting on the ground. And that's the same thing in the order flow, right? If you have, uh, you know, three you know 300 aggressive sellers versus 50 aggressive buyers you're going to have a selling imbalance and it will show up in the bar the volume in the bar as either a blue number or a red number now the last building block is point of control every bar has a point of control and it's simply the price level in the bar that has the most volume traded and that can act as supply or you know, a support or resistance um, over the next bar. I have my software has a special feature in there where it will highlight special point of controls, which I call prominent point of controls, which indicate support or resistance um, in the near term, you know, market turning points. All right. So one of the reasons why most traders fail is they focus too much only on price instead of what actually causes the price to move and when you understand you know those three building blocks delta imbalances point of control you understanding what's causing the price to move right it's it's caused by buyers and sellers in the market you know actual traders making trading decisions once you understand the relationship between the buyers and sellers then you start to understand the market so again delta i want to get into delta now it's the difference between aggressive buyers versus aggressive sellers in the bar. Positive delta, buyers are in control. Negative delta, aggressive sellers are in control. And if you're looking at an order flow chart, you can see you know, the market's moving around. You know That's what the market does. It, it rotates around trying to find a price where buyers and sellers can be happy to trade together. And when the market is moving in a direction, it's searching for a new level, you know, a, a new balance level. And Delta can help you clue you in on when, you know, buyers are coming in thinking, oh my gosh, this is a very cheap price. The market's going to go up, right? Here we are trading sideways for the most part. And then we see a nice big rally. You know, this is a uh, this is a range-based chart in the E-minis. But you can see here, you know, Delta is going back and forth, small, you know, minus 488, minus 557, positive 157, minus 975, just nine, minus 1400, plus 1000, minus 1100, minus 247. But all of a sudden, Delta gets really big, 2368, 2827, 6200, as it's breaking out of a consolidation. So I know that aggressive buyers are in control of this market. And then what happens the market you know puts in a 10 point rally you know over the next hour you know this is information that's available to you if you're not using an order flow chart if you're just using a regular candlestick chart this is what the chart looks like right you can't make heads or tails you know oh my gosh are we going to put in a big rally i don't know you know depending on the type of chart that you're using you know this is a range-based chart you know a lot of the candles they, they look exactly alike but there's so much information out there for a trader to use if they know how to use it. You know, here's NASDAQ. This is on a one minute chart, right? We make a new low. Anytime you make a new low or a new high, you gotta ask yourself, is this market gonna reverse or is it gonna keep going in that direction? And what happens at this low? I can see Delta getting stronger positive, right? 28, 150, 239, and then boom, it rallies, you know, in the next bar 10 points on a one minute chart. 
you know, with a nice strong positive delta. But the signs were in here in the delta that the selling was weakening and the buying was strengthening. Right? This is information that you can use as a trader to make better trades. You know, you, you don't want, I'm not trying to pick a bottom. I'm letting the market tell me that, hey, we're bottoming out here. You know, the aggressive, the aggressive sellers are gone. And now you're seeing aggressive buyers coming into the market, right? You know, if you know everyone is coming in to aggressively buy, you know, what do you think that information is worth to you? It's, it's be worth nice trades, right? That's that's really what you're looking for as a trader is you're looking for the market to tip you off on things. You know, here's um, the NASDAQ again, a one minute chart. Market's just drifting down. Boom, it gets the big push down. Okay, on, on whatever news, I don't care. You know, I don't look at the news when I trade. I don't I don't need to, because for one, in this market nowadays, you know, the market's reacted before you even get the news. But really what I'm watching is the reaction of the big traders and what they're doing. You know, because the big traders, they've got better news sources than I do. You know, when, when I was working in a bank, I had great news sources. Now I'm not working in a bank, I don't have access to any of that information you know i can't just pick up a phone and say hey yeah it's mike from jp morgan like i used to be able to um you know what's going on what do you think of the market and they'll, they'll tell me you know hey this is mike from you know trading in my home office what do you think there's you know hang up on you but you know traders sometimes think they got to be you know reacting to the latest tweet you know the latest news story that's coming across cnbc you, you don't need to you, you you let the market tell you what's going on you know, the order flow information that you're seeing is the purest form of information, right? Because really what you want to know is what's happening in the market right now. So what do you have? You know, you're drifting lower, gets this big push, gets down to a level that buyers say, hey, this is too cheap. You know, sellers have been selling, but now buyers want to step up and buy it at this nice low price here. And it just pops back up. And you can see the delta getting stronger, 102, 115, 300. And then it makes another quick 10-point rally. So that's delta, right? Now, imbalances, again, is when aggressive buyers versus aggressive sellers outnumber each other by a certain percentage, right? The industry standard is about uh, four to one. Now, again, it's not written in stone, but that's the starting point. You know, as a trader, my goal is not to say you have to trade using an imbalance of 400, 4 to 1, 400 percent, you know, or you have to use 987 to 1, 987 percent to 1. No, it's for you to take the starting point, do your analysis, find out what kind of trader you want to be in the term of, you know, how much risk you're willing to take per trade. And go from there you know the, the i've worked with a lot of traders over the years and i've helped develop a lot of successful traders and and i found you know the ones that want to be spoon fed everything are the ones that don't really make it very far in this industry the ones that take an idea a concept that um you know a setup like i'm going to talk about later the delta surge take that take it a step further a step further and advance it into you know a full-blown trading plan so when Buying imbalances up here, you're going to see on the footprint chart a blue number, a blue volume. And for a selling imbalance, you're going to see a red number. And this is how it appears on the footprint chart. You can see red number. You can see each bar has got you know, the volume at price on the bid side, on the offer side. So the red numbers inside the bar is selling imbalances. Blue numbers inside the bar are buying imbalances. And you know, it's a very quick way to determine our buyers or our sellers in control. And you can see as this market's coming down, you're seeing pretty much every bar has got selling imbalances. Market is, hits the bottom, goes sideways. It's kind of mixed. You know, you see some bars with no imbalances. But then all of a sudden you start seeing bars with buying imbalances, you know, multiple buying imbalances in there as the market starts making the way up. And one of the features of the order flows trader software is it will highlight bars that have multiple buying imbalances in it, you know, just as a visual reference, you know, because nowadays we're all um, very visual reference based, you know, everyone's on Instagram, on Facebook, and, you know, just looking at pictures all day long. And it's just easy to look at, um, 
you know, a bar that has a rectangle around it to tell me that there's multiple selling imbalances or multiple buying imbalances of the bar, which is, is information that I can use as a trader. Because you can see, right, as this market is going down, hits the low, starts going sideways, got a bar with two selling imbalances, three selling imbalances, then starts ticking up multiple buying imbalances here, another bar, multiple buying imbalances here. For now, you know, now I'm convinced that this move down is over because now I'm seeing the bars with multiple buying imbalances spread out in the bars and, you know, the market moves higher. This is the euro currency, right? People always ask, can I use order flow on Forex, on stocks? Yes, you can. You know, not just futures. You know, I, I think it works terrific on futures. I'm a futures guy, honestly, because I'm from Chicago, but it also works on Forex. But I think you're, you're better served watching the Forex markets that trade on the CME, you know, the euro currency, the British pound, the yen, etc. Now, again, we're up here, we're making new highs here. This is uh, gold, gold contracts. Okay. Again, you know, I showed you euro currency, I've shown you NASDAQ, showed you crude oil. This is gold, right? It works on, you know, the same things, the same concepts apply on different markets. And that's important, you know, because lots of times people like to curve fit their analysis on a market, on a time frame. You know, I'm showing you range-based charts, one-minute chart, 30-second chart, five-minute chart, volume-based charts. I don't monkey around with the settings trying to find the ideal setting for it. No, it's the same, whether it's a one you know, time frame, different time frames, different chart types, different commodities or contracts. But what's this market telling you? We're at our high of the day, right? That's this green line. As we made the new high, we got multiple buying imbalances. Now we're up here at our new high. I see multiple selling imbalances coming in, right? What you got to think, right? I mean, people don't like to think sometimes when it comes to trading. It's, it's like they, they want to automate everything, but really the best computer is the one between your brain, uh, one between your ears, right? You can figure out, and make the decision for you, right? Forget about computerized trading. It, it, computers are there to help you. I don't think it should necessarily do your analysis. So this market, we are at our high, we start drifting down. I see start seeing selling imbalances and we start trading down, 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 down off our high. You know, the Delta getting negative, sellers are coming in at the high. This is important information that you should be able to use as a trader. Now, one of the important things of order flow is tells you when the market is moving fast. You know, you want to know when the pace of the market has picked up and things are moving pretty quick. And imbalances is a way to see market sweeps. And what a market sweep is, is when a big trader comes into the market, just whacks it through several price levels. And you can see this is NASDAQ. This area here is what's called a stacked imbalance, where you have more than, um, you know, generally three. You could determine how many imbalances you want stacked neatly on top of each other. But more importantly, you see all these zeros in here. So it means someone came in, sold it. There was no counter trade. That's indicative of a market sweep. And you see market sweeps happen when there's, you know, a data release or a Fed speaker says something or, or Trump tweets and, you know, the algos and or the big traders just come in and, and hit all the bids or lift all the offers, you know, depending on what, you know, is, if the news is bullish or bearish. And when you see big, long imbalances in a bar, you know, that's indicative of very aggressive selling occurring in the market. You know, and again, this is information that you can use to your advantage, okay? And you can just see how, again, this is a one minute chart. You can see over the next one, two, three, four, five minutes, you know, this market dropped, you know, over 20 or well, close to 30, 30 points in five minutes. And, but you could have seen it. You know, you can't say, well, I, I, I could have, I would have missed it. You know, I would have got in late. Now, this is a minute based chart. And if you're watching it, you'll see that occur in the market. You get short, right? You know that your exit, your stop exit is just going to be above, you know, this, this selling imbalance, you know, or maybe even a little bit higher, you know, above the high of this previous, of the bar with the selling imbalance, you know where your risk is, right? And your potential is, boom, all the way down to the low of the day. So the third building block I'll talk about is point of control. Now, every bar has a point of control, and it's the level in a bar that has the most volume. And it's important because 
in a basic sense, it helps you determine where value is in a bar. And if you know where value is in the market, then you can make better trading decisions, right? Because if, if you could determine if something is um, cheap or something's expensive, then you know whether to buy it, right? I, I went to Costco yesterday. My wife's like, why are you buying this, you know, the, the coffee? I like to buy the, the Keurig cup coffees when it goes on sale. Normally it's, I think it's like $42, but it's on sale for $35, right? Because I know that normal price is $42. Hey, I could buy it $7 less. I'm going to buy it, you know, just like the laundry detergent. Just why you buy so much laundry detergent? Because it's expensive normally. But if it's $5 off or $4 off yesterday, I'm going to buy it, right? And point of control in the bar gives you a reference point where the most volume occurs because generally where the most volume occurs is where people are happy to trade at that time you know at that snapshot in you know in this case is a five minute bar that you know at this price like on this big green bar here in the middle you can see at 3123 that's where most traders are happy to transact okay and that's going to be my reference point into the next bar and the next bar and the next bar because you know oftentimes you know, people always say, gosh, Mike, I wish there was a way to determine, you know, why do bars trade back to a certain level than rally or trade up to, a, you know, trade back up to a certain level and then sell off? Well, oftentimes it's right around the value area of that bar. You know, if you've ever done any analysis of market profile and volume profile, you'll understand, you know, what the point of control is on a day time frame. Point of control on an order flow time frame. And an order flow chart is sort of a micro sense. Okay, so I, I know that it, the point of control of this bar is the area where most, where everybody, well, not everybody, where um, it has the most volume. All right, so that's my reference point for the next bar. And if the next bar trades higher, okay, I can start getting a bias that this market is going to start rallying. Now you'll notice these bars, you know, they come off to a certain level and then rally. They come off to a certain level, then rally. I know point of controls are moving higher. That's bullish. But more importantly, in a lot of these bars, point of control is holding as support, right? Holding as support, holding as support. You know, maybe it gets through it by a tick, maybe it doesn't reach it by a tick, but it's coming within a tick or two, right? Imagine, you know, as, as a person being able to know where the market has a high potential to pull back to and then rally from, you know, where the market's going to stop and then continue its move. That's the point of control. That's why point of control is so important to understand because the point of controls are moving higher in each bar. If each bar has a higher point of control than the previous bar, it's telling you the market is moving higher. Value is moving higher, right? It moves down. It's going to, point of controls are going to be moving down. I mean, and look at this on this move down or make a new lows, but watch each bar, right? comes back to within you know a couple of ticks or right to the previous bar's point of control. You know, this is signs of what a bearish market looks like. Now, as this market starts rallying, right, we hit our low, we've got these two point of controls lined up. They're both blue color. My software will indicate point of controls that are acting as support or resistance. They'll color it blue if it's support, they'll color it red if it's um, potential resistance and they act as turning points but as you can see as this market starts rallying point of controls in each bar are getting higher previous the bar the current bar will come back and come within you know a couple of ticks of that point of control so it's holding as support right it's holding as support now point of control you know is is very revealing at certain areas on a chart right you got to remember you know pullbacks you know people love to trade pullbacks you know here's the e-minis this is on a on a five minute chart you know we hit our high we start selling off you know oh my gosh you know got these red bars we got all this negative delta this market's coming down but then i got a prominent point of control this is blue collar here is telling me based on the volume of this bar you know this is where we have the most volume in the bar you know, it's it's coming in, it's lining up with sort of this previous point of control here where you also put in a lot of volume, that this point of control is probably very supportive. And then what happens? The market rallies up. Now you could also use the other parts of order flow analysis, right? What are you seeing in the delta? You're seeing positive delta here, 341, 846, 2000, 
before you get to the high and make new highs. So you could confidently buy this breakout here to new highs. Now, the thing with order flow, right? It's like cooking. And you have the different pieces of market analysis. You got delta, you've got imbalances, um, and you got point of controls. You know, that's your different ingredients. You got to put it together to make, you know, your your nice pasta dish, right? Otherwise, you know, you, you're just eating one thing, right? But, you know, why not have a meal, make a meal of the market? You know, this is the NASDAQ just a week or two ago. Um, this is from an email I sent out, 30 points sell off right off the high of the day on a 30 second NASDAQ chart, 30 points on a 30 second chart, the NASDAQ. Now, granted, you know, these markets have been very generous to traders this year. I, I know a lot of traders that are, you know, making their whole, you know, their daily goal, you know, in the first 30 minutes of trading. Um, so if you know what to look for, right? And here it is on a footprint chart, right? If you're looking on a normal bar chart, you know, what makes selling this high any different than the previous high, right? This is the move you want. You want that big move down. If you sold the previous high, yeah, it made a move about a eight point move, but we're gonna get, you know, before rallying back up and potentially stopping you out. But this is the move that you want, right? You want those big 30 point moves. And I'm not saying you get 30 points, but you know, if you get 10, 15, that's fantastic. But if you're watching the order flow, this is where it gets very revealing. That's why I say when an order flow is very revealing to traders. You could just see here, we're at our high. All of a sudden you see aggressive selling coming in. You see the negative delta starting to grow. You see selling imbalances in these bars. You see point of control, one, two, three, starts going lower. More importantly, I'm not gonna get into it now, but there's a difference between max delta and min delta. But you can see how it's gone from zero min delta, all max delta, to zero max delta to all min delta. This is very important information as well. And then boom, you know, you had the 30 point drop right from here. This is these three bars right here is what you're looking at right here in the order flow. And again, it's it's very, very revealing to a trader. You know, order flow is also going to help you determine when highs are weak or when lows are weak right weak highs have mostly negative deltas and selling imbalances are going to be appearing right you see that we're at this high here and you know just you know made a new high by a tick but then you're seeing you know some negative deltas appearing up here at these highs you know, you're at highs you don't want to be seeing negative delta if you think the market is going higher if you start seeing negative deltas meaning aggressive sellers are in control you're gonna think the market is getting heavy, right? It's gonna get ready to sell off because everyone is, is selling, right? Who's buying? Well, there's buyers, but what you have is mostly sellers, right? You're seeing the selling imbalances. So you see mostly um, aggressive selling appearing, right? You see multiple selling imbalances, you know, point of controls, you know, they, they sell off, they sell off, and then the market eventually will sell off. Now, if you're at a low, you gotta be asking yourself, you know, are we going lower or are we going to potentially reverse? You know, this is one of my favorite trade setups is when we make new lows and I see bullish points of controls, right? Prominent point of controls that are telling me that, um, you know, hey, there's support down here. You have passive buyers potentially stepping up to the market and bidding the market, right? They're arresting the move down. They're sitting there saying, you know, I'm willing to buy it down here at these prices, right? And then you start seeing aggressive buying coming in in the form of imbalances, right? You see this bar's got one, two, three, four imbalances. You even have a stacked imbalance here. Then another important fact is the deltas are turning positive. They've gone from negative to positive, you know? And it's important to watch what's happening down here. These bars, as we're coming into the low, minus 354 delta, minus 126 and 16. Then you get another push here, minus 332, minus 130. Now it's turned positive. And then it's followed up with another positive, followed up with another positive. So even if you're not convinced off this, you know, these three bars off the low, by the time you get, you know, into the fourth bar or the fifth bar, you should be pretty well convinced in your analysis that this market has hit a bottom. And what happens is the market rallies Another quick 25 points, you know, it's 20 points off, you know, right off, you know, the bar 
off the low. But you know, if if you're still not convinced, and you still need a little bit more conviction. You just wait a while. You know, let the market tell you that this market is getting ready to rally. All right. So the thing that I want to talk about, share with you guys, is the delta surge. You know, that's the setup that you know on my website i actually have an indicator created for but i'm going to share it with you what goes into it basically so you know if you're looking at a footprint ch chart whether it's my order flows trader chart or if you're using sierra chart or you're using um, somebody else's chart you know you could use this setup in your trading and look for it when it occurs and what it is basically is steadily increasing positive delta for a buy or for a sell watch for steadily increasing negative delta and i should preface that by saying you know it's over four bars so the first bar for a buy would be have negative delta then a positive delta in the second bar the third bar will have slightly sh stronger and the fourth bar will have the strongest of the four bars and for a sell it'll start out with positive delta then a smaller negative delta slightly bigger negative delta and even bigger negative delta but the easiest way to see it is look on a, on a chart. So this is charts from this morning, okay? This is NASDAQ. You remember right after the cash open, the market just fell over. It just fell out of bed. But if you're watching the order flow, it's on a 30-second chart, right? Here you have the delta surge, right? You got this bar, this green bar, positive delta of 58. Next bar, right after the cash open, minus 169. Third bar, minus 198. Fourth bar, minus 356. Where this arrow is, this is the bar you'd be getting short in. And it went from 82 down to 62 in three minutes, right? And, you know, you could also take into account what's happening. You got selling imbalances. Each bar's got, you know, multiple selling imbalances in it. And obviously lower point of control. So every all the signs are pointing for the market to go lower. And it just fell out of bed. It fell out of bed by over 20 points in a couple of minutes this is apple you know people ask me can i trade stocks well honestly i say limit it to the the big cap stocks like apple um but same thing right we just opened right first bar you got some buying in there you got nice big positive delta second bar negative delta ten thousand. Third bar minus seventeen thousand five five six next bar 17,578 so it's a little bit higher but then watch it goes from you know 317.30 boom all the way down below 316 in two minutes right two minutes now this is crude oil this is overnight this is at midnight chicago time um 1240 it's on a five minute chart so say you know you could only look at longer terms you know, this is a five minute chart here. We're coming down, we're right near our lows of the day. This red line is our low of the day. And then it just changes right here. You see the negative delta 33, then positive 53, 117, 159. And the market goes from, you know, the, the 70 area all the way up to the double O area, you know, 5570 up to 5600. You know, it's a nice 30 point move over the next hour and a half. Again, it's a five minute chart. but how about during the this morning, right? This morning around 7:30, we had a surge up here, a negative surge, right? You got the, the market's going sideways, right? This is how the delta surge. How I first started using the delta surge because I used to trade um, a slow-moving grain market, and I was looking for areas where aggressive buyers or aggressive sellers were coming into the market, okay? And this delta surge was was the way that I used to determine that. Um, you know, buyers were piling it slowly getting into the market or slowly getting out of the market. But you can see here 148, 130, minus 136, minus 896, minus 27, 20, 2077. As the market sold off from 5540 down to, you know, the low, you know, 5500, 5510 area. There's even one a little bit earlier than that where you have the, at 630 in the morning. You know the positive delta of 313 then minus 87 minus 357 minus 531 then the market went sideways before the sellers reappeared and the market again dropped a quick uh you know 40 to 50 cents e-minis 15 minute chart you know people say hey you know, i'm more of a swing trader you know is there something i could look at in the order flow that you know i, I could use for my trading now 
I wasn't expecting such a big sell off this morning in the in the equities, but you know, you got to be prepared for it, right? Here we're, you know, we're in a very tight range coming into the morning, you know, basically um less than a 10 point range, a nine and a half point range, which as you know is is pretty quiet in the S&Ps um coming into the morning, but you can see the delta surge started when we're at our high of the day. Negative delta, next bar, negative delta, next bar. Came back within a tick of the high, negative delta, the negative delta as this market started selling off, right? We sold off from basically, you know, the 16, 17 area down to, you know, I don't know where we are now. I haven't looked at a chart in the last couple hours, but um you know, if you got 10 points out of this, that's great. You know, if you got more than that, fantastic. So hopefully by now, you can see how order flow can help you identify trade direction. You know, by understanding who, who's in control, you can find great low risk trades. You know, don't overcomplicate trading. So for those of you that have stuck around and are interested in my book, you go to orderflows.com slash book.html. It's going to take you to a page. You have to enter your name and email address. Then after you hit submit, it will take you to a page that you can download the book. All right. Or you can always shoot me an email, uh, mike at orderflows.com. And, you know, again, if you're interested in the software, you can go to orderflows.com you know, slash special.html to find out more about it. But I just showed you how to use one piece of information, the delta, right? There's so many other ways to use the imbalances, points of control, how to combine them to find better trades. So again, you know, you could get my book at orderflows.com slash book.html. And Anna, I'll throw it back to you now. <laughs>